Hello everyone, back in to today's second video. Going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days, or today's second video, uh, which takes us to around the 18th of uh, April. We'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles running to around a couple of weeks. Have a look at the CFSV2 at the end of the video. For the next four weeks, I'll take us into the early part of May. Uh, so, 5 forecast has been uh, released, so that's a detailed uh, look ahead for the next five days, covering the full Easter period, uh, so have a look at that when you're done with uh, this one. Uh, that means that um, the final Easter update is pushed forwards to tomorrow, pushed into tomorrow, because um, we'll just be repeating ourselves, we did 5 to forecast and the Easter update uh, both today, so uh, last Easter update will be tomorrow. Uh, and also got a live stream coming up between 4 and 5 o'clock on the Gaza of his YouTube channel. We're going to get together, have a chat, see how we're all doing um, while we're under lockdown. Now, before I do anything else, just say about the competition. So uh, we are halfway through the competition uh, now. We're teaming up with mechcheck.co.uk weather instrumentation, and we're giving away the Climax wireless rain gauge. It retails at £59.50. It's a superb prize, and interest in this year's competition has been phenomenal. It's been through the roof. We've easily had the uh, biggest, um, uh, biggest number of entrants for this point in the competition. Uh, so if you'd like me with a chance, of winning the uh, wireless rain gauge, all you need to do is uh, email your name and local town or city to gazlovers at gmail.com or fill in the contact, the contact form on the competitions uh, page at gazlovers.com. And uh, again, just give us your name and local town city. You'll be placed into the prize draw on Sunday. Somebody is going to be winning this prize. Somebody will be uh, winning this prize. Their name will come out of the bag and that person will win. The widest range gauge from Gazwebbies and from MetCheck.co.uk weather instrumentation. You've got to be in it to win it. So uh, get emailing and uh, good luck to everybody. The link to this page at MetCheck weather instrumentation is in the description at YouTube and on the competition page of Gazwebbies. So you can come here and um, have a look at the specifications and uh, whatnot. But uh, it's a fantastic prize, this. And uh, as I say, somebody is going to win this on Sunday, and you've got to be in it to win it, so uh, get emailing. And a big thank you to everybody who's entered the competition so far. Now, the next thing we're going to do is say a big thank you to our latest PayPal donor. So we've had a donation for Gazwebbies from PayPal from Andrew Barker. Andy, our good friend Andy from the chat at uh, Gazwebbies, has given us a donation. So a big, big thank you to uh, Andrew Barker for your donation. Thank you so much, Andy, uh, for doing that. If you would like to give a donation to Gazwell, all you need to do is come to the uh, Gazwebbies PayPal page, sign into your PayPal account, you can give whatever donation you would like to Gazwebbies, and uh, you're going to get a mention in videos as long as you want, but you can rather stand on us, that's fine, just leave a little note with your donation to let us know, but otherwise we'll give you a mention in the videos and we'll say thank you so much uh, for doing that. You're helping us to pay for gazwebbies.com. We're in the midst of the coronavirus crisis, which means the advertisements on the website and uh, YouTube are not earning as much as they would normally do so due to the fact that the uh, economy is shrinking very dramatically during this period of global shutdown. And so if you have revenue streams like PayPal, like Patreon, are very helpful at the moment uh, for helping to keep things uh, funded and on track. Eventually, we'll all get back to normal, and uh, we're going to stay as funded anyway. But um, it does help us uh, if, uh, if you can give a donation, only if you can afford it. I appreciate it. it's a very difficult time for everybody. Everybody's very worried. Everybody's very concerned. Um, so only donate if you can absolutely afford to do so, obviously. Uh, we've also got... Uh, Patreon as well. There's 63 patrons, so hello and a big thank you to our 63 pa patrons. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your support for Gaz Webbies. If you'd like to become a patron of Gaz Webbies, again, all you need to do is come to Gaz uh Patreon page, sign up for a Patreon account. Assume you don't already have one. I mean, give an ongoing monthly donation to Gaz Webbies. It can be anything from $1 a month upwards. You pull in with the other patrons, and that is how you can become a patron for Gaz Webbies. Whether you do it through Patreon or through PayPal, you're going to get a mention in videos. We'll say thank you so much for doing that. So, a big thank you to uh, our uh, patrons. Big thank you to all of our donors. Special thank you to Andy Barker. Thank you, Andy, uh, so much for your donation. 
Right, moving on with video. We're going to start with the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. So red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for London at old wet essential. We're above average at the moment. You can stay so as we move into the Easter period and probably a little bit beyond it. Overall, it does look pretty uh, warm with the upper air temperature. There's a bit of a drop coming perhaps around Easter Sunday to Easter Monday. We cover this in the 5D forecast. It might get a bit cooler then. And then into the second half of uh, April, it does look as though then the upper air temperatures are lowering down from where they are through, week, uh, through the first week to where they are in the second week. It looks like there's a definite drop in the temperature. Uh, they're nothing overly dramatic, but it does look as though things will be cooling down as we move into uh, week two. It's extended rain stuff, so unreliable, of course. Precipitation-wise, lots of dry weather over the next few days. Could turn a bit showery over the early part of Easter, so particularly Good Friday and Easter Saturday. There may be some heavy showers around. Then getting drier again through the second half of the Easter period and through to the middle of next week. Beyond that, maybe a little bit showery as we move into the second half of the month. But again, nothing overly dramatic showing up uh, in terms of either temperature or precipitation at the moment. Temperature anomalies from the 8th to the 16th of April are going to be above average. It's going to be a mild of an average week coming up, not just for the UK and I, but for most parts of Western Europe as well. Scandinavia and Eastern Europe has gone a little bit colder. Precipitation anomalies from the 8th to the 16th of April, drier than average. So despite that, there's going to be some showery conditions around especially on Good Friday and Easter Saturday. Overall, uh, it's a relatively dry and mild or quite warm week coming up. Marcel, the GFS is looking for Saturday, so it does look a little bit showery on Saturday. We could have some heavy showers breaking out, uh, but as we go through into Sunday and Monday, we shall move that little trough away, and high pressure then sinks in from the northwest. That will turn us drier through the second half of the weekend. Shower risk will ease down, but the change in wind direction into the east and northeast will start to probably bring cooler air in from uh, the northeast. Uh, then we move into the uh, middle part of next week. My high pressure comes centred over country and then drifts towards the east. So that will start to pull warmer air back up from the south again. So around the middle of next week, you may see temperatures increasing. But after that, into the second half of next week, perhaps going a bit more unsettled then. Low pressure beginning to move in from the Atlantic could bring some showers, if not some longer spells of rain. Let's have a look at day 10. So by this point, we've got a very complicated pack. We've got high pressure up towards Greenland. We've also got a ridge to our east, and low pressure is in the middle of the Atlantic. So this high pressure around Greenland wants to turn winds into the north to northeast, and some uh, GFS runs are flirting with I this idea of putting in cold northerly winds uh, as we go into the last sort of 10 days of the month, perhaps. Uh, so we need to keep an eye on that. This particular GFS run is actually keeping winds from a relatively mild southerly direction with the low pressure to the west and the high pressure to uh, the east, sort of overriding that Greenland high. Moving into more extended range, a bit of a ridge there as we get through to Sunday the 19th. That's soon out of the way. And then we start to turn the winds into the north at the very end of the GFS run. The high pressure then becomes centred away to our north. We begin to turn more on south as well. It's a very complicated, very messy uh, weather pattern that we've got here setting up through the second half of April. Overall, it does look a little bit cooler and a little bit more unsettled though, I think. Uh, GM looks like that, so uh, again, could be rather showery on Easter Saturday. Uh, many to drier but also cooler conditions with winds in from the east to northeast later in uh, the Easter weekend. Before the high pressure next week becomes centred back over top of the country again, keeps us mainly dry, turns us warmer. Into the more extended range, looks like the second half next week begins to go more unsettled for a while. Although high pressure influences are still there up to Saturday, the 18th of April. The ridge tends to be sort of to our west-northwest. So dry, but rather cool by the time we get through to day 10. Uh, the ECM looks like that. And uh, again, we're looking at showery conditions as we go to the early part of the east weekend. Then by Easter Monday, we've got wind in from the northeast. Low pressure is to our south. Those east north east winds could be dragging in cooler out and quite a lot of cloud with them. Uh, into the middle of next week, the high pressure in centres over top of the country, so it turns mostly dry. Uh, and then the high pressure sort of slipping away to the east as we go through second half of next week, maybe hinting to go a bit more unsettled by day 10. 
Uh, that's all I'm going to get today, Tell, which is Saturday 18th of April. Very complicated pattern. So we've got a ridge across central parts of Europe. We've got low pressure out to our west, southwest, and we've got high pressure up to our north. Overall, probably a bit more unsettled. A bit more showery, perhaps, by day 10. And could be a bit on the cool side as well. BC options on the table. Within the ECL ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 18th of... Uh, that gets us to the 18th of March. So that's wrong, isn't it? So let's just flip that over. We've got March up there. So if we go to April, uh, that's better. So this is uh, the options that are on the table within the ECL ensembles for the next 10 days, which gets us to the 18th of April. Uh, we have 18 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure sitting just to our east. Low pressure is out to the northwest. A lot of dry weather with this and quite warm too. Winds coming in from a south type direction. That includes the operational run. 15 with high pressure to our south and also to our west. A trough of low pressure could be elongating in between the gap. Jet stream could be doing something a bit like that. 15 with high pressure out to our west. I'll dry away with that, but could be a bit on the cool side with winds in from the northwest. And three with high pressure just to our west. Maybe a bit of a flat westerly to the north of the country. Overall, mainly dry with that. So a lot of those options are pointing towards higher pressure for day 10. Not too bad at all. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got, which is the 23rd. No, let's get rid of that and go back to there. So, uh, yes, that's right. So that gets us to the 23rd of April. And we have 24 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure band out to our west. A lot of dry weather with that. Winds in from the north to northwest. Mainly dry, could be a bit on the cool side. 18 with high pressure to our east. Winds coming up from south to southeast. And 9 with high pressure to the south and low pressure to the north. Winds are sort of flat westerly. Uh, so quite a bit of dry weather with all of those options. Probably the nine we've got here are the most, is the most unsettled option, but even that is not overly uh, unsettled. Still, we continue to see high pressure influences, perhaps even into the second half of uh, April. Finally, the CFSV2 is a 500 millibar height. It's broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 8th to the 14th of April. The coming week has lots of high pressure sitting very close to the country. There's going to be plenty of dry weather to calm it in the week ahead. There will be showers at times, but the emphasis is more or less on dry conditions. Week 2 is the 15th to 21st of April. Above average height spam to our north and to our east. Could be a bit of a trough down here. Doesn't really show it, but that's weaker pressure. Might bring some showery conditions, particularly to more southern western parts of the country at times. But again, the emphasis is still on the above average heights, really. Week 3 is the 22nd to 28th of April. Above average heights then pulling out to the northwest, a trough in over north of Scandinavia. Winds going into more of a north northwest, so that's cooler. But again, it should be a reasonable amount of dry weather uh, with that. And then a bit of a change week four. It's the 29th of April to the 5th of May. Below average heights then setting up to the north of the country. Probably going more unsettled and cooler as well. Winds turning into the north, west, west. And um, the low pressure could provide some precipitation. So it continues to be as it has been, uh, really. The emphasis is on dry weather uh, over the next week or two. Again, we're probably still looking at, uh, well, we're still looking at showery conditions over the Easter period. So still a bit of a question mark about that. Although I think things have resolved themselves now that Easter and the direction is relatively clear, I think, which is showery to start the Easter weekend, Friday and Saturday. And then going dry, but also cooler in the second half of the Easter weekend. Could be notably warm as we begin this Easter. After that, probably a little bit more showery at times. But uh, high pressure now never too far away, even as we move into the second half of April. So the emphasis is on dry weather, even into the second half of the month. Not a bad outlook at all. Uh, right then, so uh, that's it for uh, for the week 10 evening update. We're going to be back between 4 and 5 o'clock uh, on YouTube. We'll have a live stream, get together, see how we're all doing under lockdown. And uh, we'll talk about weather a little bit as well. But main thing with this is so that everybody can check in and see how we're all doing um, while we're under lockdown and in these very, very difficult circumstances. So come back between 4 and 5 o'clock for uh, the live stream. Uh, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching.